Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, I'm going to be covering the cytoskeleton abnormalities, such as Chediac Higashi, eye cell disease, and Cartagner's disease. This is the third video in my biochem series of six videos, so I encourage you to check out the rest of these after you watch this video. You can see here in the top right corner that I give this basic info about cytoskeletons, a high yield rating of three. For those of you that don't know what that is, it is a scale from zero to 10, giving you a rough estimate for how important individual topics are for step one. And if you'd like to learn more about that rating system, you can go to my website here and check that out. The cytoskeleton is a network of scaffolding that mainly helps give cells their shape and support. Three main types, you have microtubules, actin and myosin, and intermediate filaments. Microtubules are the most important because they're the ones that have some clinical implications. Actin and myosin is also important, but mainly for muscle contraction, which we'll cover in the muscle section. Microtubules are cylinders of tubulin subunits that can dynamically assemble and disassemble. By doing so, they can change shape for different functions. They also interact with motor proteins like dynein. And these motor proteins walk along these microtubules, sort of like a train on a track. This also helps contribute to different types of movement within the cell. Here are three of the most important functions of microtubules. They help the cells separate during mitosis. They're involved with axonal trafficking, which helps bring signals and nutrients from the nucleus of the nerve all the way to the very end of the nerve. Also make up cilia and flagella. Cilia are little tails of the cell. They're made up many microtubules that are connected by these motor proteins. So as the motor protein walks along one microtubule, it changes that microtubule's position in relationship to the other ones. So you end up getting a bending or swimming motion. You can see here at the bottom left, just a reminder of mitosis. On the bottom right, we have a cross section of a cilia, but it's not too important to memorize the exact structure of that cilia. Cilia play an important role, mostly in the mucosal surfaces to help clear foreign material and mucus. When this system is not working correctly, you're gonna have Cartagner syndrome, which is a de genetic defect in the dynein motor protein that prevents proper functioning of the cilia. Cartagner's disease is a specific type of primary ciliary dyskinesia. In Cartagner syndrome, you're gonna have problems with most mucosal surfaces, which is gonna include the sinuses, ears, respiratory tract, and when you're not clearing foreign material from those specific areas, you're going to get recurrent infections such as sinusitis, otitis media, pneumonia, and bronchitis. You're also going to see infertility in men and women. In men, you're going to have infertility because you're not going to have functioning flagella on the sperm. And in women, you're not going to be using cilia to clear mucus so that mucus is going to build up, which would decrease the chance for fertilization and implantation. Chede Kegashi is a defect in the microtubules themselves. Microtubules play an important role in helping the phagosome and the lysosome fuse. And remember the phagosome is the compartment within a phagocyte or an immune cell where the phagocyte has consumed some sort of foreign material like bacteria or a dead cell. Then the lysosome is the compartment within the immune cell, which carries all of the enzymes and materials to degrade that. So you need the phagosome and the lysosome to fuse for those enzymes to destroy the material that's been consumed. If that's not happening, your immune system is not going to work very well. And you're going to have buildup of these giant granules of undigested material in the phagocytes because you're still consuming these bacteria and dead cells, etc. But you're never actually getting rid of them. So this material just starts building up in the phagocytes. In Chidiak Higashi, you're going to have recurrent infections, sort of like Cartagner's. 
You're also going to have albinism because the microtubules also help in trafficking the melanin between cells. And you'll also have peripheral neuropathy because microtubules play a key role in axonal trafficking. Before we can talk about eye cell disease, we need to discuss how mannose-6-phosphate functions normally. Imagine here that these blue dots are the enzymes you've made that are destined for the lysosome. When they're in the Golgi, they're going to have mannose-6-phosphate tags added to them. And this tag is a signal for the cell that tells them that these enzymes need to be transported to the lysosome. So what happens is after they leave the Golgi, they butt off and end up heading t towards the lysosome along the microtubule tracks. Eye cell disease is when you don't have the proper mannose tags. You're not able to phosphorylate that mannose. What ends up happening is because there's no tag to tell the enzymes where to be sent, the enzymes just follow the normal default pathway. And for whatever reason, that default pathway is to just excrete the enzymes outside of the cell, out into the extracellular matrix. So that's what eye cell disease is. You end up getting all these dangerous lysosomal enzymes outside of the cell. So that means you can find these enzymes where you're usually not supposed to, like the blood and the urine. And when they're in these compartments that they're not usually supposed to be in, they can also damage a lot of other cells. So here's some of the clinical presentations of eye cell disease, which is also just called inclusion cell disease. You're going to have the lysosomal enzymes detectable in blood, urine, and other samples from the body. One of the key things that pops up most often in these questions is abnormal facial features. A lot of times this is described as coarse facial, facial features. Now this can be part of a lot of different inborn errors of metabolism as well as acromegaly. But I still generally think of that as being a red flag to consider eye cell disease in the question. You're also going to have joint problems, short stature, and a handful of other problems. As I've mentioned, eye cell disease is called inclusion cell disease, and that's because you've got these phagosomes building up in the phagocytes of undigested material. And you can see here one of these vacuoles building up with that undigested material. Here are a list of related items which I consider so low yield that I call them no yield. And I would really suggest not putting too much time into studying these topics until you've really mastered all of the higher yield topics. That brings us to the end of this video. Please give me some feedback by commenting at the bottom of the page. Those of you that are familiar with my video series know that I currently only have videos that cover about a quarter of the total material on step one. Before I dedicate a bunch more money and time to finishing your project, I want to make sure you all actually find it useful. You could say Stop On Step 1 is currently in the proof of concept phase. So please let me know if you love it, hate it, or have suggestions for how to improve it.